What's up, Sea Army? In any form of entertainment, it's common that the makers try to convey some kind of lesson. Games are no exception. But games are hectic and complex, and sometimes the message gets lost in translation to gameplay, or just abandoned and ignored flat out. Dropping all good intentions in the mud. Today's video is brought to you by NordVPN. Use the link in the description and save 70% off a 3-year plan. Switch to NordVPN to protect yourself today. Let's look into 10 games with mixed messages. Bioshock 2 takes place 8 years after the original. And the big daddy that was so awesome and badass in the first game? That's you now! That's as if you're playing as Bowser in Super Mario Bros. 2 where the first game depicted the downfall of a kind of libertarian community based on the power of the individual, Bioshock 2 takes us to more of a collectivist underwater commune based on the hippie wave of the time frame the game takes place in. Utopia. Said aloud, it evokes heaven on earth. Yet the word means both good place and no place. An ideal. But instead of a lesson about how such a society fails, like in Bioshock 1, where the founder Andrew Ryan believed in an ideal, in Bioshock 2, the community is a desperate and deranged idea from the beginning, only started to prove that the original rapture was a wrong idea. So the lesson of the commune failing doesn't really hold water here, like it did in the first game. Still a great installment though. Venom is the drug that gives Bane his strength. The drug transforms anyone who injects it into a hulking mass of muscle and a fighting machine. Bane uses the drug to control his street gang and to give them a chance against the superheroes they have to fight. All very evil. But then the heroes of the game use a drug called Neo Venom to boost their powers. An enhanced version of the drug. And unlike the regular Venom, there are no massive withdrawal effects that make the user weaker it can get as extreme as hallucinations. And it's all legal. That doesn't seem fair. The moral of the story isn't drugs are bad. It's drugs are okay, as long as you're elitist superhero pigs. Don't get us wrong, Persona 4 is a great game. For those who don't know it, it's a kind of a murder mystery RPG, full of sassy high schoolers. One of the kids is Ai Ebihara, who comes off as a total stuck-up B-word. But you get more sympathy for her when it turns out she was overweight when she was younger, and it made her very insecure because of severe bullying. But she overcame it all with a positive mindset. Enter Hanako Otani, an overweight girl that is portrayed as every dumb fat person stereotype you can imagine. She snores, eats anything from anyone, she gets made fun of for her size, and she even broke a classmate's bike with her weight. But there is no trace of her overcoming her negative mindset. Come here, tiger. And she has very little character development in the game, and her only function seems to be to serve as the fat butt to many jokes. Kind of disappointing for a game that's all about staying true to yourself and growing. Pokemon is all about forging a bond with your animal companion. You're supposed to care about the Pokemon and not be too worried about how strong they are. So we're not even talking about the colorful weaponized dogfighting that this game actually is. But the game is clearly centered around the stats of your Pokemon. You can even regard some Pokemon as genetically superior or inferior as indicated by their IVs or individual values. Pokemon designer Shigeru Omori has even stated that these stats were being kept hidden so we can keep seeing our Pokemon as real living creatures. But the IV game is a meta that's just too helpful not to master, causing players to breed and discard Pokemon based on it in some dystopian eugenics racket. If that's not depressing enough, you know there's someone eating hot torchic eggs with tepic bacon somewhere in the Pokemon universe right now. The message of Remember Me is that bad memories are a necessary part of life, so we can learn and develop ourselves despite the pain. But then, the game is all about altering memories for personal gain, and the protagonist Nilin never really acts out on the message. She even changes the memory of her mother, trying to mend her broken family. 
the family was involved in a car accident when Nilin was a child that was basically caused by her messing around in the back seat. So Nilin changed that memory and now her mom thinks it was her own fault, which is really depressing. Even Nilin herself is only able to function because some of her memories have been removed. Remember Me is like Rambo throwing up a peace sign in Rambo 3, but with mental stuff instead of explosions. Captain America Super Soldier is all about Captain America punching Nazis. A righteous hero that's totally against that whole master race thing. And in the game, the Germans that are trying to create a super soldier are totally evil. In Captain America's world, everybody is equal and nobody has more value than the next person. But for the entirety of the game, Captain America smashes Nazis left and right by himself reducing his allies to extras in the war. And of course, Captain America himself is a super soldier created in a lab, but when the good guys do it, the questionable thing is all good, apparently. In Fallout, drugs are made and sold by horrible people and used by wretched sad fools. The drugs are depicted as addictive and having negative consequences. Even the player has to keep in mind the negative effects of drug use that really mess with your ability to complete the game. Seems like Fallout is making at least an effort to play their drugs are bad angle. Very responsible, but the negative effects of drugs on the player are easily negated. So for the player, drugs are awesome. One DLC pack for New Vegas even had a perk that would remove the possibility of addiction. And even selling them doesn't have any negative sides. But then again, it's the wastelands. Maybe there's no room for wholesome messages. The Oddworld games are all about pointing an accusing finger at those corporate bastards. Each game in the series depicts the horrors of factory farming and corrupt corporate values. Because those big corporations destroy nature and don't give a damn about the planet. That's why it's so strange that in the North American version of Munch's Odyssey, the power-up vending machines were labeled Sobe, a soft drink from the PepsiCo Corporation, which does not have the best track record when it comes to palm oil plantations, water usage in India and health effects of their products. There are no more heroes, just chills. Metal Gear Solid is all about getting bleeding heart philosophical about war and killing, full of stories about damaged soldiers that saw too much atrocities and a giant murder robot. In most MGS games, you can act like a good snake by killing as little as possible during your playthrough, which should be a life goal for us all killing as little as possible. In MGS1, you can only get a high ranking by doing this. In MGS2, you can only reach the highest rank by not killing at all. It's all very nice. But in MGS3, which is the first game of the series canonically, we see how all of this battle fatigue came to be. Even though you can complete most of the game without killing, there's one person you have to kill that sets off all the shenanigans of the following installments of the saga. The boss, the mother of special forces. Anyone that played the game will recognize what a sad moment her death is. But it's weird that the entire series of games wouldn't be possible without this kill. Killing is bad, but without the killing, no Metal Gear Solid. Who would you kill for more Metal Gear? Let us know in the comments. Meet a boy and his blob, a pretty charming game you probably haven't heard of. The player controls the titular boy who has no name. The alien blob is controlled by AI and does have a name. It's Blobbert. That's brilliant. The main baddie is an evil emperor that has taken over the blob's planet. The planet's name? Blobonia. The game's concept is pretty original. The blob can change into many objects that will help you along the way. The blob follows you around while you navigate your way through platform levels to defeat that evil emperor, whose plan is to put everybody on Blobonia on a diet of only sweets. So how do you get your blob to change shape and help you? By feeding him a steady diet of jelly beans. This game just blobbed up. Send us some mixed messages in the comments and let us know what game you think sends the strangest message. And as always, let us know what content you would like to see on this channel. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell 
to be a real soldier in the Z Army. <laughs>